Hello YouTube viewers and random Doctor Who fans, today I will be reviewing this, which is the Impossible set, and here it is in its packaging, which looks really good with its unique hexagonal design. As you can see, it follows that blue and silver colour motif of the classic era merchandise, and seeing as this set isn't from the current Doctor's era, I guess it's deemed as a classic era release now. On one side we get the 11th Doctor figure, so it has this shiny classic era logo here, and the set comes with the 11th Doctor from 2012's The Snowman, with an image of the Doctor from that episode above. It's from the 11th Doctor's era from 2010 to 2013, and it is the Impossible set. The window display is really creative here, as it's actually designed to look like one of the windows from the Governor's Mansion, with the diamond-shaped window panes on either side, while the actual window shows off the figure very nicely, and behind him you can make out two of the snowman creatures in a Victorian alleyway. Flipping the box around, on the other side we get the Oz figure. As you can see, she's rather cleverly displayed inside this circular window, which matches up as the eye stock lens of the Dalek dome printed around it, which is a nice nod to the events of the episode in which she's featured. It has all the stuff we just saw on the other side printed on it, except on one side it says, With Oswin Oswald, Souffle Girl, from 2012's The Asylum of the Daleks. Pretty sure there was no the at the beginning of that title, though. The circular window is very small, so you can't really get a good look at the figure or the diorama design behind her. The top offers two windows, though, so it allows plenty of light into the box to show off the figures. But anyway, enough about the packaging, let's move on and take a look at the Doctor and Oswin. Alrighty, so starting off, here we have the 11th Doctor in his Victorian getup from the Snowman. Taking a look at the face sculpt, it is definitely Matt Smith, but it isn't as sharp as the sculpt on the original 2010 figure release, but again, isn't as weak as the one from the 2011 figure. So it's sort of stuck in this no man's land between the two, but for the most part, it's alright. The sculpt of the cheeks and chin and around the eyes is great, except the eyes themselves are so wide and blank, it's quite chilling. The hair poking out from underneath the hat looks good, and you can see it's been brushed behind his ears, which is a great touch. Moving to the top of the head, you can see his top hat. It's purple and covered in some nice fabric detailing, while you can make out the band running around the base of it. Turning to the torso, the Doctor is sporting his classic three-quarter length frock coat, which again is purple. The lapels are black and contain the same material effect as the hat, while you can make out three black clasps down both sides. Around the back there is some nice detailing of seams and stitching, while some minimal creased and wrinkled material effect has been applied. The arms are quite basic, save for the burgundy bands around the wrists, and speaking of which, the white cuffs of his shirt are visible poking out from under his coat. The hands are sculpted really well, they clearly contain four fingers and a thumb. One hand is in a sort of half-open pan pose, while the other is sculpted to hold his sonic screwdriver accessory. Underneath the coat, a white shirt can be seen with some pink stripes running along the collar and down the chest. The collar is open and the Doctor sports a loosened black tie around his neck. His purple waistcoat contains some nice detailing with lapels, buttons running down the middle and a golden fob chain, but the actual pendant in the middle seems to be mainly silver, with a tiny splash of gold paint added only to the side. The legs are quite basic, as are the shoes, they're just the original Series 5 11th Doctor's legs, only painted purple and brown, so we get an excellent crease and wrinkled effect for his trousers, while the soles of his boots offer only one peg hole and some legal fatang. So overall for detail, it is very good. Turning to articulation, the head could do the full exorcist twist, but I wouldn't recommend it, as the paint apps on this figure are very delicate, so turning the head too much can scrape the neck. The arms can do a full 360 degree spin at the shoulder, and can move out to 90 degrees thanks to the ball joint underneath. A 360 is included at the bicep and tricep, the forearm can bend into 90 degrees at the elbow, and there is full 360 degree wrist articulation, but the only downside is that the joint is very loose and the hand can easily pop off. The figure offers full 360 degree waist articulation, there is a full 360 joint at the top of the leg, they can kick out to around 90 degrees, and move out to the sides but can't do the splits as they're hindered by his coat. Finally there's another 90 on the knee, so overall for articulation it's your standard character options 5 inch scale fur. Taking a look at the figure's accessory, the Doctor naturally isn't complete without his sonic screwdriver. Like the other 5-inch 11th Doctors, the screwdriver is in its extended mode, and it's pretty much the same thing. However, when comparing it to a Series 5 screwdriver, you can see that the paint apps are much sloppier this time around. The figure holds a screwdriver very easily, but the downside is that he can only be posed while checking his readings, and not actually pointing it. 
Okay, so here we have the other figure from this set, Osman Oswald. The face sculpt is good, it kind of looks like Jenna Coleman, but only from certain angles. For me, she sort of looks like Agent Carter from the Marvel movies and TV series when in the packaging, but yeah, it looks good enough. The eyes contain a lot of detail, you can make out her brown irises, while the nose, cheeks and red lips have been sculpted really well. Character have always produced excellent female hair sculpts, and here is no different. This looks fantastic, the moulding of the strands of her and the brush strokes are excellent and I love the way it begins to curl and turn wavy as it cascades over the front and back of her shoulders. Moving on to the torso, you can see she's sporting her red dress. At the top, you can make out this section, which is folded down at an angle, revealing her collarbones and super sternal notch. The dress itself is actually formed from what seems to be rubber, so it's very soft and can stretch, but more on that later. It's also adorned with a touch of that creased and wrinkled effect for added measure, as two are the arms. The forearms are bare, and one features her silver communicator wristband. Finally, the hands look great with some detailing of individual fingers and thumbs, with one finger featuring a silver ring. She's wearing a brown belt around her waist which is adorned with various compartments and futuristic kitchen utensils for making her souffles. The legs are bare but the joint at the knee detracts from their look but finally her shoes look excellent. They resemble red trainers and feature white soles and laces but this brown design running around them is a fantastic inclusion. On the underside they just offer some legal garbuncle but no peg hole which is a shame. So overall for detail the figure is very very good. Turning to articulation, the head can rotate, but it's severely hindered by the hair sculpt, so it can't move by much. In fact, I wish they'd just made her neck completely stationary, which would have gotten rid of this obvious neck joint. The arms can do a full 360 at the shoulder and move out to 90 degrees. There's also a 360 at the bicep and tricep. The forearm can move in to 90 degrees at the elbow and swivel back and forward at this joint too. Osman offers full 360 degree waist articulation, and her legs can kick out thanks to the rubber material of her dress which stretches to accommodate her leg but it still hinders the leg articulation as they can't move out to the sides too much. They can do a full 360 at the top though and offer a 90 degree bend on the knee and finally the foot can do a full 360 at the top of her shoe. So for articulation the figure offers a decent amount. As for accessories Osman comes with a burnt souffle and it's well a burnt souffle. It's a decent enough accessory for the figure and does set it off. The detail on it looks very good. I like how the blackened crust is cracked open in places around it there. It's very realistic. The figure can be sort of displayed holding it as though she's just taken it out of the oven. Doing a size comparison, the 11th Doctor fits in well with his Series 5 counterpart and the custom Series 7B figure which I put together. As for Oswin, well she fits in with the other 5 inch scale companion figures. Comparing the two to the 3.75 inch scale figures, you can as always see the loss in detail and quality between the 5 inch and 3.75 and scale versions. So overall, what do I think of this set? Well, it's more 5 inch scale figures, which I'm always in favour of, as the detail and accessories are always brilliant, and here is no exception. However, it makes no sense whatsoever. Why are these two characters packaged together? I mean, it would surely make more sense if Clara from the Snowmen was included instead. In fact, why not just give Oswin a single release? That would have cut the price of the set, and it means that I wouldn't have ended up with another 11th Doctor variant figure. Not that it's a bad thing, but with the time of the Doctor set out at the end of October, it's just another 11th Doctor figure released way too soon for my liking. The packaging may look fantastic, but it's very awkward, and means that if you want to keep these figures on display in their box, you can only really display one figure at a time, and I would have liked to have seen them both displayed on the same side of the box, or maybe a hinged option, where the box could split apart and swing around so both are visible. But having said that, it's an excellent set. The Oswin figure is a much needed 5 inch scale figure for collectors as we can now add a Clara to our collection next to the other larger companion figures. And I'm willing to bet that a Clara 5 inch scale figure is on the way now the character have her face sculpt on file and we know how much they love to release variants. As I said, the 11th Doctor is another unnecessary release, but it still looks good, and what's more is that the head can be detached from the body, which I'm told will allow the aged Doctor's head from the time of the Doctor set to be attached, so this figure isn't completely without merit. A lot of people have complained about issues with this set, particularly the Doctor figure with missing paint apps and excess glue on the head, but I've bought two of these sets and they both have had no issues, save for the loose hands, but as I have them for display, I'm going to simply put them into the position I want them to be in and permanently glue them into place so I'm not overly bothered. 
In the end, it's a nice little set and gives collectors a chance to own a larger and much more detailed Oswin, plus it throws in a Doctor in a new costume, so it's not all bad. And so that brings us to the end of this review. Thank you very much for watching, I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, remember to stay subscribed for more videos and keep up to date with all my latest news and reviews by liking my Facebook page and following me on Twitter. Thanks again for watching and remember to keep following the nerd. Goodbye. Okay.